Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Fishkin, and I'm the founder and director of the Mill Valley Film Festival and the California Film Institute. And it's my extreme pleasure to welcome you to our centerpiece of the 45th Mill Valley Film Festival. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Uh, tonight is not only the centerpiece, but it's also an opportunity for us uh, to honor our, our Mind the Gap recipient. And we're so thrilled to be showing you a, the premiere of Till. I, I'd like to say something because I've heard some rumors of people were wondering where I was over the last five days. And that rumor is true. I was abducted by aliens and they gave me COVID. Um, <laughs> So out of abundance of caution, I've been out of the festival for the last three weeks, and I'm happy to say I am healthy, and I am so happy to be back with you, and I want to thank my staff for a seamless production during the, the first five days. <laughs> Literally, this is the middle of the film festival, and it's a very important element like opening and closing. And the films that we have displayed, and certainly Till is amongst them, and I don't know what the filmmakers have been eating or drinking over the pandemic, but they have risen to a level that is almost incomprehensible. And again, this film is one of those that have done that. I am so excited for you to see this film, and I am so excited what the future has in store for us. And there will be people coming to the theater, not only in festivals, to see movies. We bought this theater 15 years ago, a little long-term planning. And it is our intent to remodel it in the fashion of our beautiful smith Rafael Film Center. We're in the initial stage of it. We've been working hard. Our board has been working hard and generous behind the scenes and we, you will be hearing more in the days ahead. We've been a little quiet about it because of the circumstances, I'm sure you can understand, but eventually we're gonna need all your help. So thank you in advance for that. I would um, like to introduce uh, a woman who's been integral to this festival for so many years, our director of programming, Zoe Elton. Are we on? We are on. Okay, great. Um, so great to see you all. And uh, if you haven't met her already, this is Osanachi, who is working with us on all things Mind the Gap. And um, I have to say, I feel like she's really elevated the work that we do and is really connecting with community in a way that is very, very special. So Osanachi, it's great to have you here. Thank you, Zoe. Um, my name is Osanachi. I'm the Mind the Gap manager, as, jo as Zoe said. Tonight, I would like to thank uh, our sponsors, the Marin Community Foundation, which has. Yay! The Marin Community Foundation has been a long term sponsor of Mind the Gap because they understand the importance of shining a light on the inequalities in the film industry and doing something about it. And so through their support, Mind the Gap has been able to do both and we are very grateful for their partnership. So thank you to the Marin Community Foundation. And this may be preaching to the choir, but I hope that you all know that Mind the Gap is our equity initiative. Uh, we've been working on this since 2015 when we realized that things were not changing a lot in Hollywood and that the number of women directors um, had stayed at the 7% mark for literally decades. So we started to ask ourselves what we as a festival could do and it was out of that that Mind the Gap was born. Uh, one of the ways that we've addressed this is by committing to upping the ante in terms of the number of female directors that we have at the festival. Uh, we got to 50% a few years ago, we're at 53% this year. Very happy to say. 
And then the other thing that we have is the Mind the Gap Award, which is why we are all here today. Um, so the Mind the Gap Award was created to really honor and recognize people whose work in film or around film or below the line in film has really been committed to upping the ante and walking the walk and talking the talk in terms of equity. And um, it may be through the choices of the stories that they create or the people that they work with and that they hire. Um, and it can be about the causes that they explore and that they commit to in their work. And all of these things are ways in which they contribute to closing the gender gap. Um, we've also started another award which we actually began last year, you know, in a very kind of low key way because, you know, we were just coming out of the pandemic. Um, it's the Mind the Gap Creation Prize. Do you want to make a quick observation about that? Yes, yeah, so the Mind the Gap Creation Prize uh, is a $10,000 unrestricted grant that goes to a first or second time female filmmaker with a documentary or narrative film in the festival. Um, and this year's winner is Ellie Fumbi, who is somewhere here tonight. Happens to be here in the audience, yeah. She's receiving her award on Thursday night for her wonderful film, Our Father the Devil. So if you don't have a ticket, you should go and get one because it's a very, very good film and a very important film. Um, and a fun fact is that Ellie is good friends with Chinoye and they are also good friends with uh, Nikiatu Jusu, whose film Nanny is playing on Saturday night and she's getting the MVFF award for, uh, for, for her debut feature. So it's very special that the three of them are here together and they're all win uh, winning these wonderful awards. For a non-competitive festival, yeah. we've got a lot of winners. Yeah. You know, and what I, I love is that it, this, they actually represent the, the full gamut. You know, it's like the Mind the Gap Award is, the, is we have tonight. Nikiata Jusu's film um, is winning the MVFF Award and um, the Creation Prize is actually a cash prize. So um, they're covering, I think this is a movement. What do you think? I think so. Nothing makes me happier than giving women money to do what they want. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And a big shout out to one of our other sponsors, Christine Schantz, who's made that happen. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so this award tonight, um, has been, uh, we, this year we're honoring uh, the Ensemble of Women Talking. Um, earlier on this year, Pratiba Parma received the award. So this is the third Mind the Gap Award this year. Previous recipients include Viola Davis, Jane Campion, um, and Betty Reed Soskin, the 101-year-old ranger from the, the uh, park in Richmond. Um, it's an incredible group of people. And so I'm thrilled to be able to welcome Chinoya Chukwu to this amazing group of people. I bet some of you were here for her, uh, for her film Clemency with Alfre Woodard, right? <laughs> Yay. Um, so like Clemency, Till is a film that centers a female character that commits to exploring tough material that has an intelligence and insight that is grounded in compassion and it's a love story. Um, so one other thing I would just like to notice is that, or just ask you, how many times have you ever seen a woman filmmaker, and especially a woman filmmaker of color, get to make her second feature film for a major American studio? Right? Please join me in welcoming Chinoya Chukwu. So, we have an award for you somewhere here, which we would love to give to you. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yay. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you. And I think our audience knows that, but this, but just let me remind everyone, one of the traditions that we've had with Mind the Gap, um, and this went back to Maggie Gyllenhaal a few years ago, is to invite our recipients of the award to read something that inspires them. And so, uh, and we do this rather than the sort of, you know, the traditional acceptance speech. We want to be inspired by what you're inspired by is the truth of it. So, um, we would love you to receive the award, and we would love to know what you've got to read. Absolutely. Can I give this to you? Absolutely. For a moment? Yeah. I want it back. Uh, <laughs> first of all, thank you so much to Mill Valley Film Festival and to all of you for this incredible award, incredible honor. And thank you all so much for coming here tonight. I would like to read a poem by an incredible activist and poet, Pat Parker. If you don't know who Pat Parker is, I encourage you to do a little Google search. But this poem is called Movement in Black, and I dedicate this reading to Mamie Till Mobley. Mm. Movement in Black, movement in black, can't keep them back, movement in, ba in black. They came in ships from a distant land, bought in chains to serve the man. I am the slave that chose to die. I jumped overboard and no one cried. I am the slave sold as stock, walked to and fro on the auction block. They can be taught if you show them how. They're strong as bulls and smarter than cows. I worked in the kitchen, cooked ham and grits, seasoned all dishes with a teaspoon of spit. I worked in the fields, picked plenty of cotton, prayed every night for the crop to be rotten. All slaves weren't treacherous, that's a fact, that's true. But those who were, were more than a few. Movement in black, movement in black, can't keep them back, movement in black. I am the black woman, and I have been all over. When the colonists fought the British, I was there. I aided the colonists, I aided the British, I carried notes, stole secrets, guided the men, and nobody thought to bother me. I was just a black woman. The Britishers lost, and I lost, but I was there, and I kept on moving. I am the black woman, and I have been all over. I went out west, yeah, the black soldiers had women too, and I settled the land, and raised crops and children, but that wasn't all. I hauled freight and carried mail, drank plenty whiskey, shot a few men too. Books don't say much about what I did, but I was there and I kept on moving. I am the black woman and I have been all over, up on platforms and stages, talking about freedom, freedom for black folks, freedom for women, in the Civil War too, carrying messages, bandaging bodies, spying and lying, the South lost and I still lost, but I was there and I kept on moving. I am the black woman and I have been all over. I was on the bus with Rosa Parks and in the streets with Martin King. I was marching and singing and crying and praying. I was with SNCC and I was with CORE. I was in Watts when the streets were burning. I was a Panther in Oakland, in New York, with NOW, in San Francisco, with gay liberation, in DC with the radical women. Yes, I was there and I was st I'm still moving. Movement in black. Movement in black. Can't keep them back. Movement in black. I am the black woman. I am Bessie Smith singing the blues and all the Bessies that never sang a note. I'm the southerner who went north. I'm the northerner who went down home. I'm the teacher in the all black school. I'm the graduate who cannot read. I'm the social worker in the city ghetto. I'm the car hop in a delta town. I'm the junkie with the Jones. I'm the woman in the bar. I'm the matron at county jail. I'm the defendant with nothing to say. I'm the woman with eight kids. I'm the woman who didn't have any. I'm the woman who's poor as sin. I'm the woman who's got, got plenty. I'm the woman who raised white babies and taught my kids to raise themselves. Movement in black. Movement in black. Can't keep them back. Movement in black. Roll call. Shout them out. Phyllis Wheatley. Sojourner Truth. Harriet Tubman. Francis Ellen Watkins. 
Harper, Stagecoach Mary, Lucy Prince, Mary Pleasant, Mary McLeod Bethune, Rosa Parks, Coretta King, Fannie Lou Hamer, Marian Anderson, and Billies, and Bessie, Sweet Dinah, Aretha, Natalie, Shirley Chisholm, Barbara Jordan, Patricia Harris, Angela Davis, Flo Kennedy, Zora Neale Hurston, Nikki Giovanni, June Jordan, Audrey Lord, Edmonia Lewis, Erica Huggins, and me, and me, and me, and me, and me, and all the names we forget to say, and all the names we didn't know, and all the names we don't know yet. Movement in black, movement in black, can't keep them back, movement in black. I am the black woman, I am the child of the sun, the daughter of dark. I carry fire to burn the world, I am water to quench its throat, I am the product of slaves, I am the offspring of queens, I am still as silence, I flow as the stream. I am the black woman, I am a survivor, I am a survivor, I am a survivor, I am a survivor, I am a survivor. Movement in black. Thank you. Thank you. With that said, it is an honor to present to you my film, Till. Thank you. I hope that you'll take this moment to feel the film, and I hope that you will take it away with you and feel its message and its thoughts and its heart over the next days as it deserves to be processed in that way. Um, one of the uh, women that Chinoya mentioned in that incredibly dynamic introduction was Erica Huggins. Erica's an activist, a poet, she has a book out this week. I mean, like, the fact that we actually got here when she's doing a book tour is amazing. Uh, uh, it's called Comrade Sisters, Women of the Black Panther Party. Um, check it out. She is going to be here in conversation with Chinoya Chukwu. And can I just say what an incredible privilege is pr privilege it is to have these two amazing women here in conversation tonight. Please welcome Erica Huggins and Chinoya Chukwu. It is such an honor <laughs> to be doing, having this conversation with you. Erica Huggins is a shero of mine, and um, I just, I, I'm just in awe. But I'm in awe. I am so in awe of you, Chinoye. I mean, you're my friend and everything, but come on. <laughs> and. I told Zoe that this was the most amazing thing I've seen on screen ever. Because you pulled something out, wrote about it through the eyes of a person like me, a black mother. And it's just, it's beyond touching and moving and heart opening and heart wrenching. But I'm reminded to be every day grateful that my sons and my grandsons are alive. And I hope that 
everybody out here feels that way about the people, their beloveds. But you showed love on the screen. So I'm going to ask you all about how you <laughs> did that. And, but thank you for allowing the story to be told in a woman's own words, from her own heart. It's a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> um, and we don't have any tissues up here or anything. I know. I'm going to need a couple tissues, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Danielle Tedweiler. So. Yeah. Every award possible should go to her for, well, let me ask you a question. How did you encourage her to go so deeply into the heart of Mamie? I was very intentional about creating a safe space for her. To, I constantly re reminded her and showed her that I am fiercely protected, protective of her well-being and her process as an actor, but her heart and, and, her, and her spirit, because I knew that she was going to have to really go deep. And when she acts, when she, when she stepped into this role, she really offered her mind, body, and spirit. And that demanded a vulnerability that needed to be protected. And so I, you know, we, we, we spent months before shooting, going through every emotional beat and nuance of the script and diving deep into the research, but also talking a lot about her needs, you know, to, to protect her well-being. And, you know, I, I, one of the things that I did, what, well, we had a therapist on set every day for the cast and crew. And, thank you. Yes, thank you. And, um, and also there were certain scenes like the scene where Mamie was looking at Emmett's body in the funeral home that I limited to two takes. So there are certain scenes that I limited to two takes ahead of time. And I told the crew, do the best you can, but no matter what we get in two takes is what's gonna be in the film. And um, I, had Dan I, I asked Danielle to choose when in the shooting schedule would be best for her to do certain scenes. And so she, we, it was a real partnership. It was a real partnership. And you know, I am fiercely protective of the cast and crew I work with. And I'm acutely aware that we are human beings making a film. Okay. And whatever their human needs require was priority before the film. And, you know, the, f the film will happen as it happens. And I, uh, I was just very communicative of that. And I think that that, um, that in, in, in addition to the preparation that we did and um, really helped her re go deep. It, I, I thought of it, I, I knew something about you creating, I felt you would create a safe space, which is for everyone, and especially Danielle. All, every single one of the actors and actresses, you drew forth their very best. And that says something about them and about you and about the collective wisdom and how did you choose Danielle? Mm. She sent in an audition tape. <laughs> wow. It was a very traditional process. Um, mm -hmm. We were looking for our Mamie for months and then she sent in an audition tape. And when I cast actors in leading roles especially, I first look at this. 
Can they communicate a story with their eyes? Can they hold and command this frame? Can they get underneath and in between the words on the page to bring out the emotional and psychological subtext? And Danielle checked all those boxes times 10. She sent in an audition tape and then I called her back for a director session. And the director session was um, working with the scene where Mamie is looking at Emmett's body in the funeral home. And there's no dialogue. But there are so many different emotional beats that lead to Mamie's moment of decision. And that's what Danielle and I talked about in the director session. Where does Mamie begin emotionally? And how does she get to that moment where she decides to sh force the world to see what happened to her son. And in doing that work with her, it just solidified my decision to cast her. Beautiful. Because the other part of the space that we call safe is that it's brave. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't lose a child, but I've lost a lot in my life and to be brave enough to then go forward and do what is necessary to do you your Mamie Danielle was able to show us that we can step up and step forward did you know that that's what you wanted to do with this film? What, what do you want people to walk, what do you want all of these wonderful people to walk away with and feel inspired to do? I want every, everyone here and all audiences um, who watch the film to feel activated, to feel activated, um, to, to see yourselves and the humanities that are on screen to be activated to ask yourself, how can I get outside of my own bubble of, of, and, 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 and be a change agent? Because we're all connected. What are yes. the ways that I might be contributing or be implicit in the oppression of others? And mm -hmm. how, can I, how can I challenge that, dismantle that? There's a midterm election coming up next mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. What are the ways, how can I know what's at, how, how can I educate myself, know what's at stake? Not everybody has access or the ability to vote because there's, there, people are actively being disenfranchised and voting mm -hmm. rights are being, are, 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 in, are, are being taken um, from people. But if you have the ability to vote, there's that power. How can I be a part of movement building? What are the ways that I can affect change, big, small, everything in between? Um, and how can I build upon the legacy of the freedom fighters on screen, freedom fighters like er Miss Erica Huggins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I want you to be activated. And I want you to believe that even if the change and progress that you don't, doesn't happen in our lifetime, that we can still be a part of helping to move things forward for future generations. Yes. I'm sort of jumping around with the questions. Sure. <laughs> you can do whatever way, you want. <laughs> thank you. Well, the way you answered that was so beautiful because we have a tendency, we humans have a tendency to wait for someone to do it. Mm -hmm. And somebody once said, a friend once said, it's in a film now, but he said, if you're looking for something, something to do, go to your front door mm. and look right in front of you or to the left of you or to the right mm. of you or behind you and you'll see what there is to do. Mm. It's not a lot of overthinking, is it? Mm -hmm. And as I watched this beautiful film, I was so amazed by Mamie making one decision after the other to let the world know, not only about her son, about the way in which black men and women are treated. And 
brown men and women and indigenous men and women all over the world. So I'm going backwards with a question, why did you choose to, to write and direct this film? The producers of the film have been trying to get this film made for decades. And um, they reached out to me three years ago and asked me if I was interested in telling this story. And I told them the only way that I would be interested in telling this story is if I can craft this story in a way that it's about Mimi and her journey and it's through her point of view because Without Mamie Till Mobley, the world wouldn't know who Emmett Till was. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to put Mamie Till Mobley in her, center her in her rightful place in history. And black women are so often erased from the screen, from history, from our present, from stories about movement building, which ties into the work that you have dedicated your life to and are now, and have written about in your book. Um, and so I really thought that this would be a great opportunity to center a black woman. Are you glad that Tanoya did that? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious because I am absolutely delighted doesn't work for tonight, but I'm just so moved by your decisions. And I'm also amazed by young black and women of color who are showing up on screen, not just as actresses, but as writers and directors and producers. And it's about time. Yes. Yes. It's about time. And I will say this, it's not only enough that we are showing up as writers, directors, and producers, but we need to be supported as such Absolutely. and supported to succeed and provided the resources and, uh, to succeed. I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar with your other work and particularly <laughs> clemency. Yeah. But this one is a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it is. What's that word, Hollywood? <laughs> this is my first studio film. This is my first studio wow. film. <laughs> so, there are some scenes in the film that are just so extraordinary, I don't know how to do them justice in words. Mm. And again, as a mother, my, my mother's heart was in operation through the whole time I saw the film. And when she's on the stand and she's asked yes. mm -hmm. the inane question, how did you know this was your son? And she so eloquently says it. I remember this with each of my three children, mm. right? And then the feeling when they were teenagers, my sons particularly, mm. of the phone ringing late at night and my heart going up into my throat. Mm. Just the phone ringing if they were out. Mm. I hope that your film helps people to understand that if they use their connections and their voices and their skills and their con to everything, that there is a way that we can stop this. It's systemic. But if all of us were working toward the same goal to stop that violence, it's systemic violence, yes. and it's sanctioned, yes. um, then other mothers mm -hmm. will be afraid. Someone said that to me tonight mm. at a book event. Mm. So what you're showing is the, what we need to do, I feel. Is that, was that part of your intention? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and that's part of the activation piece, you know, what we need to do. I, I didn't want to approach this film. 
a, as a quote unquote period film, this is a film that's very much about now and reflective of our present realities. And the people reflected in this film from Mamie Till Mobley to Merle Evers to Medgar Evers to Dr. T.R.M. Howard, et cetera, they, they, we see some of their strategy, you know, and, um, and I hope that that could be really inspiring um, for us as we figure out what do we do, how can we try to s stop this or challenge this from continuing to happen. Yeah. We don't want any child to be treated like this. Yeah, exactly. Um, you made some decisions about what you would show on screen and, and what you would not. Um, no harm to black bodies on screen. And yet you were very unapologetic in truth-telling. The truth was being told everywhere, sometimes nuanced, sometimes directly. And I wonder um, what you think about the power and the anger that the two white men who later admitted that they did kill Emmett. Where, what is that? What is it? What causes that, that anger, that power, that's so strong that you would kill a child? Someone's baby. I mean, it's, it's, it is a system of white supremacy that has emboldened them and empowered them and, mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and made them feel entitled, you know, mm -hmm. and superior. And we're seeing it today. And we're absolutely seeing it today, you know, in, uh, in the similar forms, in different forms, you know? I mean, it's, it is, I mean, that's one of the many reasons why I was, I was so excited about portraying Dr. T.R.M. Howard in, in, in the community of Mount Bayou because Dr. Mm -hmm. Howard unapologetically walked in his power. Mamie raised Emmett to unapologetically stand in his power. Mamie stood in her power and, and that directly challenges this white supremacist attitude of entitlement, you know? And they're, and with JW and Roy, they represent a power structure that tries to diminish that, that tries to diminish the power and the beauty and the strength of black people or anyone who is not like them, right? Doesn't, it's not just black people. Right. And that's, that's why I was adamant about making sure that the film visually is beautiful and bright and vibrant and there's a lot of light because I want that to be representative of the light inside people of color, particularly black people that cannot be extinguished in spite of that white supremacist belief that we does, we are we are less than, you know, because we're not. Yes. And that's a direct challenge to the mentality of a JW or a Roy. I'm just thinking about how much fear is in the heart of a person that does such a thing. Mm. We think it's hatred, but it's really fear. Mm. And Fear of what? Can you elaborate? I know, I know. I'm change. Asking. Yes, fear of change, yeah. That mm -hmm. the whole thing around seeing at, looking at, whistling at, talking to a white woman mm -hmm. is fear of, of, for that person of feeling less than. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But m more than anything. I feel that it's instilled in children generation after generation. Yes. And if we do not talk to our children and tell them the truth of history, yes. just fact, yes. children 
just want the facts, yes. then we will keep reproducing this horrible fear-based thinking and yes. doing. Yes. That, that was on my mind as I watched the courtroom scene, the actual dragging away of him. The whole thing is fear. And you, show, you, show, you showed that to us so we could think about it, each as individual human beings. Mm. Thank you for your candid answers. I was, once, I was once in a film festival, I don't know if it was here or another place, where a person stood and said, thank you for not just shoving it in our face. Mm. I thought, what kind of statement is that? It's all around us. Yeah. We can hear it, see it, feel it. Why is it that we don't like it? I'm not asking you. I'm asking myself, why is it that we don't like it? The truth to be told mm -hmm. about what we might do instead of settling for. Mm -hmm. It's a conundrum. But there is something everyone can do. Yeah. And look what you did, Felicia's daughter. <laughs> Felicia's my mama's name. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I don't think I have any more questions. Do you want to say anything more about um, the process you went through as a? How did you take care? Who took care of you? That's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, I. I, I, I admittedly did not do the best job taking care of myself. Aww. And that's definitely something I've been working on <laughs> um, for, since we wrapped shooting. And I've been thinking a lot about self-care and mm -hmm. boundaries. Um, <laughs> and, and so I'm gonna do better next time. But um, I, 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 do have a I, I do have a rich community of people and you know, you've met my best friend, Latrice. Mm -hmm. And so she was absolutely you know, by my side as much as she could um, every step of the way. Uh, but there's definitely a lot more that I could have done to take care of myself. And I asked that question about you and your um, acting crew and the rest of your crew, which you explained, and about you because a black person, no matter where they are in the diaspora, we don't have to go far to pull up yeah. the information that is so painful yeah. or unpleasant at the least. Mm -hmm. We know someone yeah. who's been through it if we haven't ourselves. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that was why I asked you how you were taking care of yourself. Um, you, you, you will. I will. I'm getting better. Yeah. I'm getting better. And I think that we live in a world where we're told, especially black women, that it's not OK for us to practice self-care. Mm. Mm -hmm. But then there is radical self-care. There is radical self-care. Where there, we, must. we must, we write ourselves into our schedules. Yes. Um, this film really took me to a very deep place of love for people and hope for humanity. Mm. How it did that, it would take me a long time to explain. Mm -hmm. But I really do believe that a film like this, as people were saying to you as they left the theater, that this was a lot for them to process, but they did it. Yeah. Um, if we could look at history and claim it for ourselves, yeah. rather than saying, oh yes, that's a piece of black history. Mm -hmm. It's American history. It is American history. It's world history. Yes. And, um, and we owe it to one another. Yeah. 
to it's consider a, it. This is this is a this is a film that we that is about all of us, you know, and yes. it affects all of us. It is a part of all of us, and you know, it might resonate with people differently in different in, in different specific ways. But my my hope is that we can all empathize with the humanities on screen and see ourselves in some way in the film, you know, through these through this through this story. I don't mean to sound corny, mm -hmm. but thank you for having so much love in your heart. Seriously, you. because you had to to do that. That, that film didn't come from fear or any other kind of negative thing. Yeah. It came from love, yeah. so thank you. Thank you. And could everybody without saying it, um, think of the way if they could say something to Chinoye right now, what would it be? Thank you. Yes, thank you. And? I love you. Oh. <laughs> thank You're you. Can you hear everybody? Thank you for following your dreams. <laughs> oh, God, There's a thanks. tissue at the ready. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the, your power inspires. Yes. It, it's a true story. It's not just a story. Yeah. So can we thank her in in some way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.